In this lesson, we will discuss motion problems of a particle under constant acceleration. We're in on this video, we have two problems to solve. But before you proceed on the video, please pause for a while and try to answer these two problems at your own. Now, let's try to answer these two problems. For our first problem, a certain automobile manufacturer claims that its deluxe sports car will accelerate from rest to a speed of 42 meters per second in 8 seconds. We're in, from our given, the initial velocity of the car is equal to 0 meter per second since the car is initially at rest and it will reach to a final velocity of 42 meter per second in a time of 8 seconds. And for letter A problem, we want to solve for the acceleration of the car. We're in, we can solve for the acceleration using the formula of the final velocity Vf is equal to the initial velocity Vi plus the acceleration multiplied by the time t. Let's try to solve for the A on this equation algebraically. We're in, transpose Bi on the other side of the equation and you will get AT is equal to Vf minus Bi. Solving for A now, divide both sides of the equation by the time T and this will be Vf minus Bi all over the time T. Let's now try to uh, substitute the final velocity of a 42 meter per second, the initial velocity of 0 meter per second, all over the given time of 8 second. Therefore, try to uh, input now this uh, equation on your calculator and the acceleration of the car will be equal to 5.25 meter per second squared. And this will be our final answer for the acceleration of the car. Then, for the letter B problem, assume that the car moves with constant acceleration, find the distance the car travels in the first 8 seconds. Take note, when a particle is moving in a horizontal straight line path and there is no changes in the direction, the displacement and the distance are numerically equal with each other. That means, to solve for the distance, let's solve for the displacement delta x. We're in. We can use the formula of the delta x is equal to the vit plus the one half multiplied by the acceleration a multiplied by the time t then a squared. We're in. We have the given initial velocity, the time t, and we already have the acceleration. All we need to do now is to substitute all these values on this formula. But actually, aside from this uh, formula of delta x, we can also solve our displacement using the formula of the delta x is equal to the final velocity vf plus the initial velocity bi all over 2 multiplied by the time t. And... Aside from these two formulas, you can also use the formula of the Bf squared is equal to the Vi squared plus the 2A delta x. Wherein, you can uh, use one of these uh, or you can use all these uh, formulas to solve for the displacement. And of course, it will give you the same uh, answer. And on this solution, I will uh, use the second equation for the delta x since the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the time are all given on the problem. Solving for the delta x now, the final velocity of 42 meter per second, the initial velocity of 0 meter per second, all over 2, multiplied by the time t of 8 second, therefore... Our delta x now will be equal to 168 meters. And this is the distance the car travels for the first 8 seconds. Now, for letter C, what is the speed of the car 
10 seconds after it begins its motion if it can continue to move with the same acceleration. And we want now to solve for the final velocity after the time of 10 seconds. That means our final velocity is unknown and this is at the time of 10 seconds. Take note. We can solve for the final velocity using the formula of Bf is equal to Bi plus the acceleration multiplied by the time t. And the initial velocity is equal to zero. And take note, the car will maintain the acceleration, which is we solve it from the problem letter A, that the acceleration is 5.25 meter per second squared. And the given time t here is 10 seconds. Therefore, the final uh, velocity of the car after a time of 10 seconds will be 52.5 meter per second. And this will be our final answer for the final velocity at the end of the time 10 seconds. Now, let's proceed with our second problem. A hockey player is standing on his skates on a frozen pond when an opposing player moving with a uniform speed of 12 meter per second skates by with a puck. After 3 seconds, the first player makes up his mind to chase his opponent. First, let's try to illustrate this problem. Our first player is just simply standing on his skate. That means the initial velocity of the first player will be equal to 0 meter per second since the first player is initially at rest. And the opponent player passes the first player moving with a uniform speed of 12 meter per second. And after a time of 3 seconds, let's say, after a time of 3 seconds, take note that the opponent player is already ahead of a certain distance from the first player. And again, our opponent player is moving with a uniform speed or a constant speed of 12 meter per second. Take note that the displacement delta x is equal to the initial velocity bi multiplied by the time t plus the one half the acceleration and the time t squared when we say that the velocity is constant it simply means that there is no change in the velocity at all and take note acceleration is defined as the rate of the change of the velocity per unit of time and when there is no change in the velocity at all, that means the acceleration will be equal to zero. And the displacement delta x now can be solved by the product of the vi, which is the constant velocity, multiplied by the time t. As since the opponent player passes this uh, first player and after 3 seconds, the first player makes up his mind to chase his opponent, that means the opponent player will be a, uh, a certain distance ahead from the first player which can be solved by the product of the velocity and the time t and that is a 12 meter per second multiplied by the time of 3 seconds. Therefore, our opponent player is 36 meter ahead by the first player. Now, how long does it take him to catch his opponent? Take note, for the first player to catch his opponent, it should be that the final position of the first player and the opponent player must be equal to each other. Let's say that the initial position of the first player is an initial position of a zero. And let's uh, call the xf1 to be the final position of the first player and xf2 will be the final position of the opponent player. And again, for the first player to catch his opponent, it should be that the final position of the first player should be equal to the final position of the opponent player. Let's solve for the final position of the first player, which is for the first player, 
we can solve for the displacement delta x using the formula of bit plus the one half multiplied by a multiplied by the time t squared and uh, our final position for the player at a, after a time t is the x f1 and its initial position is denoted to be 0. And take note for the initial velocity of the first player, this is equal to 0. And this will now be 1 half multiplied by the acceleration which is given on the problem and that is a 4 meter per second squared multiplied by the time t and squared. Therefore, the final position of the first player after a certain time t is equal to 2t squared. And this final position of the first player must be equal to the final position of the opponent player. Now, let's solve for the final position of the opponent player. Wherein, since we know that the opponent player is moving at a uniform speed and we can solve for the delta x as equal to a bt. And this delta x is the final position of the opponent player which is denoted to be xf2 minus its initial position wherein our uh, opponent player is 36 meters initially away from the first player and that will be minus the initial position of 36 meters is equal to vt. Let's try to transpose the negative 36 and it will become positive 36 meter plus the uniform speed of 12 meter per second multiplied by the time t. Then, we know that to catch the opponent by the first player, the, dis the final position xf1 should be equal to the final position of the opponent player. Let's try to equate wherein our xf1 is equal to 2t squared. And for the final position of the opponent player, that is 36 plus uh, 12t. And let's try to uh, solve for the value of the time t on this equation. And that is the time for the player to uh, catch his opponent. From this equation of 2t squared equals to 36 plus 12t, Take note that this is a quadratic equation by nature since we have here a squared of a uh, t. And let's try to uh, transpose uh, all the equation on the left side which is equal to 2t squared. Then transposing 36t or 36 I mean plus the 12t. That is minus uh, 12t minus 36 equals to 0. Wherein we can simplify this equation further by dividing uh, both sides by the common which is 2. And this is a t squared minus 6t minus uh, 18 equals to 0. And this quadratic equation can be solved by the quadratic formula wherein since uh, we have a variable t here as an unknown, I will uh, express the quadratic formula as the quadratic formula and that is a t is equal to the negative of b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Take note that a is the numerical coefficient of the squared of the term and the b is the numerical coefficient of the first degree term and the c is the constant. Solving for the time t now, this will be the negative of b which is the negative of the negative 6 and that is 6 plus minus the square root of b squared and that is negative 6 squared minus 4 and for your a, this is understood to be 1. And that will be minus 4 times 1. The c is negative 18 all over 2 multiplied by 1. Take note that on the quadratic equation, we have two possible answers. That is using the plus sign and using the minus sign. Let's try to uh, input this equation on the calculator using the plus sign and followed by using the minus sign. Then, solving for the time t using the plus sign, 
this is equal to 8.1962 seconds. And using the minus sign, the time t will be equal to negative 2.1962 seconds. And take note that there is no such as negative time. Therefore, the time for the first player to catch his opponent should be equal to the 8.1962 seconds. And this will be our final answer for letter A problem. For the letter B problem, how far has he traveled in that time? Or this is simply refers to the final position of the players when the first player catch his opponent and that is your xf1 solving for your xf1 now the formula of the xf1 take note is equal to 2 multiplied by t squared solving for your xf1 this is now a 2 multiplied by the time t of 8.1962 second and then squared. Therefore, the final position of the first player when this player catch his opponent will be equal to 134.3554 meters. And this will be our final answer for our second problem.